Um, serial cards for the Altair seem a little bit few and far between for some reason or another. I mean, possibly to the extent I might even try uh, making one up later in the series. Um, a simple serial card isn't isn't that difficult to um, produce, so that might be uh, something to consider for the future. Um, I did find this card, uh, which is made by Martin Eberhard. It's called the 88-2SIO JP. Nice catchy name there. <laughs> um, it's $125. Uh, it's uh, basically a drop-in replacement for the MITS 2SIO card. Uh, give you a little look over it first. There we go. There's one end. And the other end. And look at the back. There we go. It's quite nicely made. It all, it all comes ready assembled. Um, you you get as you'd expect. You get the normal uh, two serial ports, which come out on these two connectors here. That's serial port one. That's serial port two. Um, you also get um, a two K EEPROM or space for a two K EEPROM. Uh, in this particular case, Martin's actually supplied his own monitor program, Amon version two point four, which could be useful. Um, in addition to that, it also features a jump start circuit, so you can set the, uh, the address here and when the machine boots up you can boot to any address in memory, so in this particular case if you set that to F800 you could actually just jump straight into Martin's um, monitor on. Um, the other thing it features is it's got a power on reset circuit, uh, the Altair has it, as it stands has no reset circuit, uh, well not a power on anyway. Um, so, so uh, the, normally you need to sort of hold up the stop button and then flick the reset to actually get it to reset. So that's you know a couple of good features on there. Um, I mean, in fact, um, there's virtually enough here to create a turnkey board uh, in that you know you could actually um, switch your machine on and start running straight away. The only thing it's missing, it's got no provision for the sense switches. Which means that <laughs> that's the really the only thing missing. But I've, I've got some ideas on how we could possibly implement that. So if, if you felt that you didn't really want to go down the road of um, building the entire front panel, uh, we could possibly you know you could boot the system off this board. So stay tuned for that one. Um, we need to configure these um, dip switches here. There's a few of them, you know, there's uh, four of them in total. There's a few uh, jumpers as well. So what we'll do, we'll jump over to the PC and I'll um, show you how to configure the dip switches. Okay. Right, let's look at the dip switches one at a time. Uh, this is switch one. This sets the jump start address. We're not going to use it in, in this particular test, but we'll, we'll set it anyway. Um, we're going to set this to F800. Um, it's numbered from A15 up here up to A8 at the top. So if the switch is over to the right, um, it's on, that's a 1. So the, the first four switches here, which will be A15 to A12, we've set all those all to the 1, that will give us our F. And the final one, A A11, um, we've got that set to a 1 as well, that will effectively give us an 8 with these other um, three switches set to a 0. Right, so that's um, switch 1. We'll just go across a bit. Right, the next one's switch W2. Now that one is the actual address of the serial ports themselves. Uh, there's no need to change this because we use, you know, this is the only serial board in the system, and we obviously want it where the MIT software would, you know, normally expect the serial ports to be. Um, it, it's slightly different in that um, the if a switch is on, it's a zero, and it's also a little bit confusing because it's it's labelled A7 down to A2, which is uh, a little bit strange. Um, Basic what it means is is that A4 is at a one, and effectively with the the bits we can't see up the top here, that sets it to one the base to one zero hex. Um, so the, the the two ports will go from uh, one zero and one one for the first serial port, and then one two and one three for the second serial port. Uh, down the bottom uh, we've got. 
Um, EEPROM enable, that's EE, that's switch 7, so we've switched that on because we want to use the EEPROM. Um, there's also the option of e automatic EEPROM disable, we don't need that, so that's off at the moment. Right, the next one is switch 3, uh, this is the EEPROM address. Again, we're looking at if a switch is across IE on, that's a zero. And this one's labelled from A15 up to A11. Now we're going to put our EEPROM at zero because that's where the, the 8080 vectors do when you do a reset. So basically, I've switched all all these switch, switches on, so that will give us address zero where the um, EEPROM starts. Um, the final three switches, there's jump start, which is uh, switch 6, which we're not using, so that's off. Uh, the, the two on the bottom are, are RAM disable signals, and we'll, we'll go over those later, so they're both switched off at the moment. Right, okay, the final ones are switch 4 and switch 5. These just set the bode rate for the uh, two serial ICs. Um, they're both set to 9600, it's a bit difficult to see off the edge here so switch 4 is on for both ICs. Um, there's quite a few jumpers as you can see here uh, some more further down as well, I think there's some more there. Um, just leave those empty at this, this point, we don't need those because we're using uh, just a normal RS232 terminal which doesn't need anything exotic. We may set these these ones at some point which gives you um, handshake on request to send and clear to send but for the moment we'll just leave them off. Uh, the only last one is um, this one here which you can set to write enable if you've got an EEPROM in here instead of an EEPROM so at the moment we'll just leave that to read only. Okie dokie, that's a lot done. Right, we can't use the um, monitor program at the, this this point in time because we've got no RAM in our system so I've, I've written this little program which should test the CPU card and the serial card all in one go. Starts off with a few equates at the top here, the, these first two just define the, the two ports within the serial chip and the second two are effectively masks so we can tell when the transmitter buffer is is empty and, and ready for us to send something and when there's uh, receive it's uh, data available in, in the uh, receive buffer. Uh, we start off by initializing the chip and we do that by sending a 3 and an 11 hex. The, the 3 completely resets the, the chip and the 11 sets the um, serial format to 8 bits uh, no stop bit and oh sorry no parity and two stop bits um, we do that just by sending those values to the console status register which we defined up here right if we go on to the next page um, first thing we're going to do is generate a boot prompt just so we know the program's actually started running so initially we have to go around in this little loop here and um, what that's doing that's just waiting for the transmit um, buffer uh, entry flag to go to a 1 and that, that, at that point we're good to transmit so once that's that's gone to a high we stick a letter A in the A register and then strip off the most significant bit and then we output it um, to, by sending it to the console data register. Right at that point hopefully there's an A on the screen or at least that's the plan. Um, once we've done that we go into our input routine which is a little bit here. Again we go into a little loop here um, but this time we're waiting for data to arrive in, in the serial chip. Uh, as soon as it does we'll drop out of this loop and at that point we can do an input from the console data register and then again we strip off the most significant bit and then we save the contents that we've just got from the data register in B. Uh, at that point I'm going to blip A15 just, just so we know something's happened if we just go over the page here. Um, if you look at this uh, that's 8000 hex and above it is the same representation in binary so that one there is, you notice is under A15 that's how I'm blipping A15 by sending 8000 to it 
right let's go back to the program again so we got to that bit so what we'll do now we'll go into the output routines on the next page here we go uh, same sort of thing as before we'll go around in this little loop here till till the chips ready to be um, given another character to transmit um, at which point we'll recover the contents of A from the B register strip off the most significant bit and then print it again you know, just as we did before by outputting to the console data register uh, once we've done that we jump back to the previous page here so uh, it, that bit will just go around in the loop so any character that we uh, type will be echoed to the screen now, there's one other thing we can tell from this program if we go to the end here you notice that the the last address here see that will be 303132 so it'll never get outside that address range and apart from when we do the blip obviously so if we look at that um, in hex that's 32 hex above it I've done the, the binary representation again um, and you notice that the 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 only line uh, or the highest line that's ever um, going to go high is A5 um, after that all these address lines here should stay at zero other than our blip line which is A15 so that's another thing we'll check when we run it so that's the program. We'll go back to the bench now and uh, program it up and see if it works. All right, I've got everything set up. Uh, we've got uh, the EEPROM here with our program in it. Uh, everything, the CPU cards behind there, you can just about see it. Um, also got serial cable here that's going off to the laptop that's running a terminal program. And everything's powered up. Uh, so what I'm going to do got my logic probe here, I'm going to plug that into A15 which is the one you remember that every time we receive something from the terminal that should flash so I'll press the key on the terminal now see the uh, every time I, oh, I press that you should see a little flash on the logic probe Right, so that's working. Just to prove that the program is actually going in the loop, if I move on to the next pin over, that's A3, see that, that's flashing constantly. Uh, the next pin over is A4. That's not doing it, but that, that all should be activated. When I press the key, you should see that go off and on again, which it is doing. So that's in the loop, all right. And the final one that should be moving is A5. Uh, that's low, but if I press the key again, you can see that coming around the loop and flashing A5. Now, the, that should be the last address line that's moving. So if I move over to A6, that one's low, and even if I press the key, that's that's still low. So our, our program is successfully going in the loop. And A15, as we've seen, every time it receives a character is flashing. Good, good news. Right, let's see what's happening on the uh, terminal. All right, we're looking at the terminal emulator program on the uh, laptop now. So what I'll do, I'll press reset on the system. We should see the A prompt come up, and there it is. Now, if I type something on the keyboard, just a space, and anything I type is just automatically echoed. I go down a line. There we go. that seems to be working so uh, that will do it for this video and I shall uh, see you in the next one